Oh yeah, it's your buddy Weasel here. Today is Friday, September 11th, 2009. It's 9-11 today on the Ugg Explode podcast. This is number four in the ongoing series of atrocities towards ear kind. I'm going to improvise the whole show today. I'm not going to cut a friggin' second off of it. Basically, I got this idea that what I would do is go through my much-neglected 7-inch singles box and, at random, pick out uh, things to play. I'll comment on them a little bit, and then I'll play what I like off the 7-inch, and that's what we're going to do for this hour. So we're going to get into some deep tracks here. Right now you're listening to the B-side of Band-Aid's Do They Know It's Christmas 7-inch. It's uh, This piece of shit is called Feed the World, and it's... Uh, a bunch of Ponzi British rock stars telling you uh, Merry Christmas. It's on the wrong speed, as you can tell. Okay, so I'm going to reach into the box, and I'm going to pick out the first thing I'm going to play here today, the first actual musical item. And it looks like I have picked out an Orthrealm 7-inch, which was released on uh, Forge Records. I don't even know if I've ever played this, but uh, it's from 2000. 2004, I guess, was when it was put out. Since I don't even know what's on the single, I love Orth Realm, of course. I've worked with Mick Barr many times in the past, and we'll continue to work with him in the future. I'm sure this will be a real treat. So this is the uh, one of the sides of the Orth Realm single on Forge Records from 2004. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Orth Realm's great. I was fortunate enough to see them uh, about a half dozen times when they were still playing, including their early non-repetitive material towards the end, especially with the release of OV. They started doing sort of uh, more repetitive loops, whereas the original material they did was like what we just heard i.e. a total barrage of riffs with no repetition. They were a great band. Maybe they'll play again someday. Uh, okay, so I'm reaching in again. Here comes something else. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be a Mick Bar Fiesta here. I've just picked out the Crom Tech Christmas single. It's uh, on red vinyl with a green label. Uh, and it was released by a record company... <laughs> whose name I won't mention because I think they fucking suck. And uh, this came out, I don't know, this came out a few years ago. Uh, let's just put it on and see what happens. It's not labeled, so I don't I don't know what uh, song we're going to play here. The Orth Realm, no, I'm sorry, the Crom Tech Christmas single. Crom Tech was the band that Mick was in before Orth Realm. Yeah, That was Silent Plarm by Cromtech from their Christmas 7-inch. That was recorded in 1996. All right, I'm going to reach back into the box. This is a weird show. All right, what is this? <laughs> Boy, this is full of surprises. I, I, I never go in the 7-inch box. If I have a 7-inch at this point, it's either something that was given to me by a friend whose music I respect, or 
it uh, is something that has emotional resonance for me that I've kept as a memento. And uh, what I've just pulled out, I'm not sure it falls into either of those categories, but it's a seven inch. It's basically a black cover and on it in bold letters it says Steve Mike, S-T-E-E-V Mike. And a few of you people out there might know that as an alter ego of Andrew W.K. I first met Andrew in the, uh, I don't know, I guess it was mid to late 90s, and he was a skinny little guy who was interested in the uh, Ann Arbor, Detroit noise scene, um, which revolved around Pete Larson's Bulb Records and the band Couch. And uh, at one point, it seemed like Andrew, this was maybe a few years ago, he seemed to maybe, he seemed to be trying to branch out his persona as Andrew WK, and he started making dozens of insane bogus conspiracy websites for himself and Steve Mike was one of his alter egos um, sort of an evil twin to Andrew and um, at one point there was a Steve Mike 7 inch circulating but what it really is is a repress of the first bulbs of the first couch 7 inch on bulb records so uh, I'm actually pretty psyched to play couch this is from the Steve Mike 7 inch, which is actually the first couch 7 inch. Enjoy. <laughs> the track haters of couch <laughs> off of the first couch seven inch on bulb records that pete larson from 25 suaves or whatever the fuck his group is called on guitar and the great marlon magus on guitar on that track pete was singing the drummer's name was charlie it was just some weird guy they had around who could barely play drums like i said this is from 93 or 94 i think it was i think it was 93 um, but it's all clouded by the fact that this has uh, been repackaged as a Steve Mike record, um, which is an alter ego of Andrew W.K. Boy, I'm really picking them today. Let's keep moving along. If you're wondering why I'm not playing a ton of tracks in a row, it's because I only have one turntable, and what I'm doing today is raw-dogging it. I am talking live, and I'm recording live, and this is all happening in an hour in real time. No edits, so I'm spinning seven inches out of my box. I'm pulling some 7 inches out of my box. All right, the next one is U.S. Maple 7 inch on skin graft. This is uh, part of the the um, skin graft packaging aesthetic. It's got uh, kind of a cute half 1.5 fold over cover, and it's on clear vinyl. This came out in, well, there's no date on it, man. Came I don't know. Let me play it first, and I'll figure out something to say about it later. Uh, U.S. Maple ruled very much at first. <laughs>
U.S. Maple, When a Man Says Ow, from a 7-inch on Skin Graft Records. That was released in 1995. I think I first saw U.S. Maple live in 1995. Um, Jim O'Rourke, I was in Jim O'Rourke's car for some reason. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he said, Weasel Man, I just, you got to hear this this band that I just produced, U.S. Maple. They're, they're incredible. Check this out. He played me the tape. It sounded really good. And then we went inside and saw them play, and I uh, couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was so bizarre. I had no expectations. Um, basically, the three guys who were playing the instruments uh, started playing this long, um, insane uh, instrumental for about three minutes, and it went through these sort of... <laughs> these sort of strata of, of retardation. And then finally the singer came out and um, looked like kind of a schleppy bum and a bunch of garbage came falling out of his mouth in the last few seconds of the song. And that was it. The first song was over. The form made no sense whatsoever. Um, from then on I was pretty hooked. Uh, and I got to see them at their prime um, for me, 95 through about 99. And uh, the Lutenbachers toured Europe with them in 98 and they played some really unbelievable shows that are definitely the high point of my experience as an audience member. So I'm a little misty right now. I haven't played that 7-inch probably since the 90s, so this is good. All right, let me reach back into the box here and see what's next. Ooh. Oh, yes. All right, the next track I'm going to play is off a 7-inch um, a by the Hi, by the Connecticut black metal band uh, Havo Hedge. They're, uh, they're, well, you know what? I'm gonna let the music do the talking here because they're, they're, they're something special. Thank you. 
That was Havo Hedge with their track Unholy Darkness and Impurity from the 7 inch of the same name that came out on Grinding Peace Records in 96. Grinding Peace was uh, a label run by a guy who sang in the death metal band Malicious Hate. They were pretty good. I liked them around 1996. Havo Hedge um, was the the spinoff of the cult American black metal band uh, Profanatica. And uh, most of the Havo Hedge records sound really weird. They sound more like the residents than black metal, so they're definitely worth checking out. Um, the guy uh, who is Havo Hedge, Paul Ledney's real character. I'll leave it at that. All right. Next single up for bid is <laughs> XBXRX. This is uh, pre Weasel Walter XBXRX. This is the so called Arkham 7 inch, which was released in. Uh, well, it was recorded in 2001. It probably came out in 2002, 2003. This was a single that the band recorded when they still lived in Mobile, Alabama, and it was recorded with Vern Rumsey from uh, Unwound. Um. <laughs> Man, I can't remember what songs are on here. Uh, I'm just going to play one of the songs from side two. Uh, they didn't have song titles at this point, so that uh, explains a lot. Here we go. <laughs> XBX or X from the Arkham 7 inch recorded in 2001. Uh, that was pretty experimental. That XBX or X, those, those guys are experimental. I didn't realize that. Oh, wait, yes, I did. I was in that band. Anywho, let's move right along. Uh, another random 7 inch here. Okay, this is by Fat Worm of Error. They're a fine, uh, weird quintet from. Uh, the Northeast. I think they're from Northampton, or they're based in Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, I think they're pretty friggin' good. I don't have anything more to say about them other than I don't think I've ever listened to the 7-inch, but they're an awesome band, and uh, this is the first track on side one. Hello, Fat Worm of Error from a 7-inch that doesn't really have any information on it whatsoever. <laughs> um, I don't know what that song was called. That's awesome. They rule. Uh, get, the drummer's name's Neil Young. It's not the same Neil Young that many know and love. The guy that just plays G chords and sings real high like this. It's the other Neil Young from Fat Worm of Error. Okay, moving right along here, I'm going to draw another oh it's xbx or x again this time with me playing i am totally randomly picking this and i have to say that uh 
there's a there seems to be a cagey and logic unfolding here as I uh, put my clammy little tendrils in there and withdraw once again. Uh, this is from the Narnak 7-inch that XBX Rex did in 2003. This was the first thing I did with those guys, and uh, I like this record um, a lot. <laughs> I made it. I'm glad I like it, huh? Uh, and I'm just going to play the whole damn thing because it's a it's, uh, one-sided 7-inch on red vinyl. And... Um <laughs> was the entirety of the 2003 Narnak 7-inch by XBX Rex. Uh, like I said earlier, that was the first recording that I made with the band upon joining it in 2003. And man, that, that sounds good still. We were a pretty good band at that point. Uh, I, I don't mean to talk about it like some kind of huge past tense, like we weren't good later on, but it was interesting because we were really hell-bent on trying to be as intense as we possibly could, and man, that sounds like brutal hardcore to me, which wasn't really what we were trying to do. We were just trying to be really fast and extreme, and I think that still holds up well. Uh, as far as that 7-inch goes, we recorded the basic drum tracks at our practice space and then overdubbed the rest of the um, performances in my bedroom uh, in a loft that I was living with the members of XBX Rex and uh, Jenny from Eraserata and some people like that at a time. So all these memories have just come flooding in hearing that thing because, I mean, I don't, I don't listen to this stuff often. All right, next 7-inch up for bid. <laughs> it's like it's like a high school reunion here. This is the second Bobby Kahn 7-inch. And uh, 
Uh, all right, well, I'm going to play it. I don't want to play it, but I'm going to play it anyways. No, no, no slight against Bobby. I'm just not in the mood for this. It doesn't seem like good programming. But hell, we're going to go with Chance Operations today and just trust it. This is uh, his uh, song, Never Get Ahead. Khan giving you possibly not realistic advice because it seems like sometimes you can get ahead giving head to the man. That's from a 7 inch he put out in uh, 1996. That was on Truck Stop Records. And uh, the drummer on that's Tim Jones from Cheer Accident. Real funky guy. <laughs> I think maybe Dylan Poza also from Cheer Accident at the time and the Flying Luton Mockers former Flying Lutenbacher at that point was playing bass on that. I could be wrong, but I think that's who's playing on it. I haven't listened to this since the 90s, so um, like I said, I'm trying to figure it out. I played in Bobby's early bands around 95, 96, 97, 98. <laughs> I guess, yeah, um, I played different instruments in some of his bands. He was doing some really weird stuff at the time that I really had an affinity for, and we had a pretty good 
collaboration going there for a while. So it's kind of interesting to survey his early work. All right, next item up for bid, Ron of Japan. This is an early Hanson Records release. Um, Hanson Records is the label run by Aaron Dilloway, the guy who uh, helped found Wolf Eyes back in the 90s. He was also in Couch, who we heard earlier, although he did not play on that recording. Um, this is a one-sided seven-inch by a girl group he had. He, well, he was sort of the Svengali for called Ron of Japan, and they were two teenage girls who lived in the suburbs around Ypsilanti, Michigan, and they had some weird band, or I, I really don't know what happened. Like, they sent him a tape or something, or he found them somehow, or a friend of a friend recommended them. But basically what it is is two girls in their bedroom like doing weird songs of like found instruments and stuff uh this is really obscure here it goes this came out probably 94 93 <laughs> That was Ron of Japan. I don't know what that was all about. That's all the info I've got. That was pretty awesome. I'm glad I played it. The next single we've got... Oh, man. Oh, man. This is not cool. All right. I just uh, I just picked out of my collection the uh, probably the one single that I really probably shouldn't be playing. Um, actually, this copy is sealed, and I'm not going to open it, so if I have another copy of it, I will play it. Um, but I'm not going to talk about it until I confirm that, because if I don't have an open copy, I'm not even going to bother. It's sort of um, questionable material, to say the least. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I have an open copy. All right, well, we're going to have to get questionable today. This is a... Uh, is this open either? Yeah, this is open. Okay, this is... Uh, this next 7-inch I'm going to play, and I really have to stall and think about which side is least offensive to the most people. Um, this is a split 7-inch between uh, a racist black rap group and a racist white rock group. Uh, it's sort of uniting the two hateful groups. Um, on, on the rap side, you've got NASA doing their song Holy War. <laughs> And on the other side, you've got Snout doing Auslander out. I think just to just to be safe here, I'm going to play the the rap side. This came out in the mid '90s. I don't really have that much information about it. The label on it is Taikyo and Mmm You Sick, and this is uh this this song would be uh this is uh Holy War Kill the White Devil. 
by NASA. NASA. Niggas are space age. Take it from a nigga like me. I'm our world. A nigga like you cannot breathe without a bubble on your head. I said nigga be dead. Talking about atmosphere. We crack smoke clouds. The paint not clean. You get high when you go out. And the planetary niggas never come down. Talking about a world. Every single cotton picking motherfucker is proud. Niggas are space safe, she take it from a nigga like me We came to the world on a quest for mace Bringing technology to demonstrate With advanced keyboards we will create A brave new race of no one hate, hate. Centuries before the white devil Took the shirt off your black back We cruised this ball of dirt millennia Before the pyramids were built To contact the space of our Egyptian guild Epochs before your civilizations were fine Crew members were kicked off the ape craft and left behind Left in the Sahara with a will On a fucked up earth as punishment So before you grieve For Adam and Eve I'm gonna spin you a tale of the earliest For the ears to believe This tale with the fibers of truth I shall weave Yo, Yo Christian brother Got to wake up y'all From Allah Sampler Hear the wake up call Afraid of a blue-eyed Christ, it's your ass, not his, that was sacrificed. Sacrifice. Sitting in church like a good little nigga. Quiet as a mouse. Why? Selling your love to the white devil in the White House. Kill the white devil, 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 in his house and in his home, kill the white devil, white maggot in the crib alone, kill the white devil, African can you regain the throne, kill the white devil, where he works and where he breathes, kill the white devil, and revel when he bleeds. You ever stop and think that the missing link was pink? No. Why? Cause motherfucking nigga was black as ink. You ever stop and think that that melted plastic stink was me rocking up, having pawned the kitchen sink? So give me some crack rock, shave the crack rock, give me the crack rock, the ship and the crack rock. I'm off and up 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 I kill you for a hit, kill me for some shit, assemble your kit, sucking on a glass tit, smoke through the nipple of your only bitch. Earth niggas are weak, complacent and meek, afraid of white master, you unravel in the hollow and sneak, around in your sneakers, cocaine and peak, my monstrous ape organ of bitches must seek. I done killed Father Time. Spawn from other space, I'm her son. Us, uh, my sips of the McNops. We are not equal. White is superior. To nothing. We are not equal. Black is inferior. To nothing. Kill the White Devil, Holy War. A heartwarming track from 95. Looks like that came out. Mmm. A split single between white racist and black racist uh, musical groups for your re-listening enjoyment. All right. Digging back into the vaults here. Uh, Burmese, a band that I've been in for the last two years. This is an earlier 7-inch by them called uh, Treaties of Greed and Filth. This is a jam. I'm into this. This is the first track on that 7-inch. <laughs>
Treaties of Greed and Filth by Burmese from a 7-inch on Scenester Credentials, recorded in 2001. Um, that's a song that we've actually played recently, but we didn't play the whole long, slow part at the end. We just played the fast part up front. So that's interesting for me to hear. I haven't heard that in a long time. Next thing out of the box, and this is at random. Like, I actually just looked at the box for the first time. For the most of the set, I've literally been closing my eyes and just sort of picking stuff out of a box. I guess I'm starting to cheat a little, and it didn't really, didn't really work out in any particularly good way, pro or con. Uh, the next 7-inch I'm going to play is uh, by a Pittsburgh-based duo called Connell Rad. This is from 2005, and this is uh, their song, Fear and Abandonment. Connell Rad from Pittsburgh, their 2005 7-inch. Ludenbacher's actually toured the East Coast a little bit with those guys um, at that point. That's the background. Adam, the guitar player, was in Creationist Crucifixion. And uh, the drummer Jeff is now in the band Zayo, but he's doing um, some other kind of new music -y type stuff in New York right now, so I don't think those guys are playing together anymore. All right, moving right along. Oh, <laughs> Glass Candy and the non-Shattered Theater. I guess they had moved on from the Shattered Theater at this point. We're going to play uh, their kick-ass 7-inch uh, uh, Love on a Plate.
That was Love on a Plate by Glass Candy from their 2002 uh, 7-inch on release for Bats Records. Uh, I like those guys' early stuff a lot. I think their first bunch of 7-inches and CDRs are really awesome, and they still stand up really great. I haven't really talked to those guys in a while, but uh, they're cool people, and they definitely were on to something. All right, moving right along. Yeah, buddy. It's a 7-inch by the suite. Uh, and I'm going to play the B-side because early on their, their 7 inches tended to have the pop hit on the A-side. And then they're like heavy rocking number on the B-side. And that B-side today is going to be Need a Lot of Lovin'. You know what? Fuck it. It's not happening. I actually just cracked that single in half when I tried to put it on the turntable. <laughs> so I'm going to throw that in the garbage and I'm going to take out something else. Oh, man. God. It's like a magnet and steel here. Uh, another band I was in for a while called Curse of the Birthmark. This is, uh, this is a song called Alibis. It's from a 7-inch we made a few years ago, three years ago or something like that, for uh, 333 Records. of the birthmark it says we recorded that in september 04 I, I don't even believe it was that long ago because that's like five years but i guess it's been that long i was in that band for a few years uh they still play around every once in a while their original keyboard player rejoined a few years back he lives on the east coast so i think he comes out here sometimes and they do a gig every now and then fairly low profile but uh it was it was cool to play in that band for a while i really liked them before i was in it and when eric left for a while um 
I kind of came in to try to keep the band going. And uh, we made a few records, and they're out there, so check them out. I'm a fan as well as a member of the band. All right, so we're going to start to wind this down a little bit. It's been about an hour. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to play that. Okay, yeah, I'll play that. I actually just rejected my first one because I didn't want to play any artist twice. Although that would be really chance operation of me. I, I'm not feeling chancy anymore. I'm feeling like we got to end this shit with a bang. And a bang we shall end it with. What I'm going to play next is one of my favorite seven inches of all time. It's by a New York City group from the late 70s called Red Transistor. And uh, that group featured Von Elmo on vocals and chainsaws and guitars and organs and drums and all kinds of stuff. And uh, Rudolph Gray on guitar and lead vocals here on this track called Not Bite. You've been listening to Ugg Explode Podcast on 91109. If you want more information on me and the label and my projects, go to www.ugexplode.com. That's U-G explode, one word. And uh, thanks for listening. This was a live, uh, no edits broadcast of me spinning random seven inches chosen blindfolded out of a box of uh, singles, none of which I've listened to in ages. Thanks for coming. And here's Red Transistor with Not Bite from 77. (laughs) 